Infection Control in Total Joint Surgery by Andy Holvinsky and Mike Vesely. An infection is the colonization of foreign microbes in the human body. There are four stages of infection. Stage one is an acute infection occurring up to four weeks after surgery. Stage two is a delayed deep infection occurring four weeks to two years after surgery. Stage three is an acute infection occurring more than two years after surgery. Stage four is an acute infection, either deep or superficial, that turns into sepsis. Patients who are diabetic, patients who are immunocompromised or immunosuppressed, patients who are elderly are at an increased risk of infection. Here is a list of the most common infectious bacteria. Also listed are their rates of occurrence. Stage 1 treatment is the removal of the prosthesis and the irrigation and debridement of the wound with antibiotic irrigation. It is also the placement of an antibiotic impregnated spacer for a knee or the placement of antibiotic beads for a hip. These are then followed by an aggressive round of antibiotic therapy. Stage 2 is the salvage of the joint and reimplantation of a prosthesis when no evidence of an infection remains. Infections can increase the cost three to four times due to an increased recovery time, more required treatments, additional surgeries, and a lowered reimbursement rate. An infection can increase the cost of a total knee replacement by up to $50,000 and can increase the recovery time by up to six months. It can also increase the cost for a hip by up to $60,000 and increase the recovery time up to one year. So what can we do? There are standards of practice that can be followed. One of these standards of practice is the use of laminar airflow, which can decrease the number of bacteria found by up to 50%. Laminar airflow is effective because it circulates the air in the room, filtering out the bacteria found in the air. Another standard of practice is the use of body exhaust suits, which isolate the scrub staff from the patient and help to provide a barrier against the natural shedding that occurs from the human body. When used in conjunction with laminar airflow, it can help reduce infection rates to less than 3%. Another important standard of practice is room traffic, which should be kept at a minimum. Unscrubbed staff should be aware of their proximity to the sterile field and should remain as far back as possible except when dispensing sterile items. Washing the wound with antibiotic irrigation reduces the number of local flora and seems to have as profound an impact as the pre-op antibiotic that is given prophylactically. It is important to mix cement in a vacuum to decrease air bubbles. Air bubbles not only compromise the integrity of the cement, but provide more spaces for colonization. This can cause loosening of the prosthesis and inflammation in the joint. In conclusion, the surgical team should strive to achieve these golden standards. A surgical theater with laminar airflow. Staff following strict aseptic technique. Policies limiting room traffic. Policies requiring body exhaust suits for scrub staff. Scrub staff wearing double gloves and changing the outer gloves after draping. Ample use of antibiotic irrigation. Properly mixing cement to reduce imperfections. An educated and efficient staff can help reduce the surgical time and the amount of unintended contamination, resulting in a lower infection rate.